In this example, I'll be finding the normal stresses for this loaded beam. You can find a link to this PDF in the video description below. I'll go ahead and start a new patch transaction. And I'll start a new patch on database. Call it example 618. I'll hit OK on the form on the right. First create a line under geometry, go to curves, select line by XYZ method. From the origin, create a line that is one meter in the Y direction, and hit apply. You can reorient this as shown. Next, I'll go to the properties tab to define my beam cross section and materials. Under Tools, select Beam Library. Here, for your new section name, we'll call it Cross Section. Scroll to the right and select the Rectangular Section. According to the PDF, the depth of the beam is 0.4 meters and the width is 0.2. So back in that tools beam library window, the width is 0.2 and the depth or height is 0.4 meters. Hit OK or apply at the bottom to create your section. If you go back to tools beam library, you select this cross section, hit calculate display. Here you get a diagram of where your cross section looks like. I'll create a, or I'll take a picture of this for future reference. Now that I've defined my cross-section, I can define my material. Click on isotropic, under material name, call it mat. For input properties, give it a Young's modulus of 200 E9 and a Poisson ratio of 0.3. Hit OK and hit apply. Let me reorient this so the Z direction is pointing upward and the Y direction is pointing this way. Select 1D properties and call this beam member. Under input properties, for section name, select the cross section I made a moment ago. And for your material, select the material I also made a moment ago. For your bar orientation, for now, type in a value of 0, 0, 1. This is a vector going in the Z direction. Hit OK for your application region. Select this curve. Add it and hit OK. Hit Apply. Next, go on to the Boundary Conditions tab. Select Displacement Constraint and call it Fixed. One side of our beam will be fully fixed or constrained. So type in 000 for translations and rotations. Hit OK and for your application region under point or vertex, make sure you have this click. Select the leftmost point, add it, OK and apply. Next, go to nodal force. Call it moment and for your input data or before the input data, for your application region, select the opposite point. Add it, OK. For your input data, we'll use the values given in the problem. Here we have a value of 7.2 kilonewtons acting leftward or in the positive z direction. Here I'll make the value go in the positive x. So 7.2 E3. For your next value, it is negative 9.6. And that will be acting in the z direction. 
So type in 0 for y. For z direction, type in negative 9.2 e3. Make sure you have this right. That should be a 0 0.6, not a 0 0.2. Alternatively, you can use commas between the values. Hit OK, and since we already have something in our application region, we don't have to do that now. Hit Apply. Now you can see the 12,000 new force acting at the tip of the beam. And that is exactly what they do here. Or this is a moment, actually. So I think I just defined a force, not a moment. So if you go back to Model tree and look for the force I just created. Right click and modify. Move this vector to the moment section. Hit OK and hit apply. The two arrows here indicate that this is a moment and not a force. Go to the meshing tab. Go to curve meshers here. Select this curve and hit apply. 10 elements have been created. You can view the numbers by going to the Home tab, hitting Label Control, turn on, and turn on the element numbers. You can also turn on the node numbers. To view your cross-section, you can go to Display, Load BC Element Props, and scroll and select 3D Full Span and hit Apply. And this will only work after you've meshed your curve. You can go back by selecting 1D line and hitting apply. And now, when reviewing your beam stresses, you'll be given four options. You'll be given your stresses at point F, point C, point E, and point D. And so let me go ahead and first analyze this. So under analysis, go to analyze entire model. Once you click that, hit apply. And I'll hide all my boundary conditions. And put your XDB results and hit apply. Go to your results tab, select this subcase, scroll down and hit bar stresses bending and hit X component. Under position at point C, you can select the four other points, and those correspond to the bending stresses as shown in this diagram. So if I view the stresses at point C, hit close, and hit apply get a value of negative 4.95 here. Now you may be asking yourself, where is point C? Let me go back to display load BC element props and show you the beam. First, let me clean this. Here I have a projection of my beam cross-section. If I go to utilities, Display, MSC Nashtrend Beam Tools. Here I can view my points C, D, E, and F. In order for this to work first, I must go back to Properties and Modify the Beam Member property I made a moment ago. Switch it to Properties and uncheck Associate Beam Section. Hit OK. Scroll down and hit Apply. Back in that beam verification tools, which again you can access through utilities display MC Nashtrend beam tools. Make sure display is point C, D, E, and F under display options. Uncheck include polygon for scale factor, make it 0.4 and hit OK. Under select beam elements, select any element. If I zoom in, you can see that it's plotted or drawn points F, C, E, and D here. And let me do one last thing. Under Display, select Axis and select any other beam. 
Let me go back to my results. And here I can see that point C is in this location. So when I view that result, I'm viewing the bending stress at this top left point. And if I compare it to my result, point C here, I do get a value of negative 4.95 as shown here and in the legend here. Switch to point F, hit close and apply. That would be this point right here on the top right. I have a value of 2.25 and it matches the value here, point B. Next I'll view point D and E and I should get negative 2.25 and 4.95. point D and E, I get 2.25 or negative 2.25. Next I should get 4.95 and I have obtained this value. Let me clean this up and go over what this axis and what these points signify. Back in the properties section, Right click on beam member and modify. Here under bar orientation, this defines the y axis of the beam element. Here I defined it as 0 in the x, 0 in the y, and 1 in the z. If I were to change this to say 1 in the x and 0 in the z, I'll hit OK and apply. Hit yes for all. And before that, let me modify these input properties. So to make this modification, so, so toggle this back to dimensions. Once the values are dropped back in the boxes, switch it back to dimensions or properties. Uncheck associate beam, hit OK. Make sure you have curve one here and hit apply. Now you'll notice a few things. The cross section has been reoriented. So when I go back to the beam verification tools, I'll first hit all to erase the plot. And I'll select element three or any other element again. You'll notice that my axis has switched before the y-axis here of the beam, which is the green arrow, was pointing in the z-direction. Since I changed the orientation vector, so it points in the x-direction, the y-beam axis now points in the x-direction. And you can see that when you zoom in. And if I view the points C, D, E, and F, I select another element. Notice that before C was up here, F was up here, E and D were down here. Since the cross section has been reoriented, point C, F, E, and D have also changed. When you go on to your results, the results will also change. And that's the very big importance of the orientation vector. You can click cancel in every box, make sure to save. And that's how you find the beam stresses for beam elements.